There are so many people that would love, love to say that they have created a great life. They just don't know how. They're not sure how to create a great life or where to look to access the power to create a great life. They love more fulfillment. They love to have a fruit filled life, but they're just not sure how to do that. And that's why today we're going to talk about how to create a great life. And I'm going to show you how you have the power to create whatever life you want. What's going on? Welcome back to the Mentality of Success. I am Joshua Washington, and whether you're listening or watching on YouTube, great to have you either way. Now, today we're going to jump into this conversation around how to create a great life, because I know there are a lot of you who may be watching this and your life may not be as great as you'd like for it to be. Let's just say that. I almost named this how to create the life you want, because I think it points to a truth which is we all desire to have a great life. Like you won't find too many people that will say, hey, I want my life to suck. Like nobody's raising their hand for that, all right? We, we all innately want or desire a great life because we all innately desire to have a fulfilling life and a fruit-filled life. Now, what do you mean by fruit-filled, Joshua? When I say fruit-filled, I mean the fruit in our life, fruit meaning love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, you know, like, like faithfulness, goodness, like some self-control, some discipline. Like we would love when we close our eyes and we envision ourselves, we envision our life. Our life is filled with that kind of fruit. But the reality is a lot of us have to come back to the present to acknowledge that our life isn't as great as that vision. Right. And so today we're going to talk about how to create a great life because believe it or not you have the power to create whatever life you want you have the power to create whatever life you want and i'm not talking about like this new agey or name it and claim it you know envision your life nothing's wrong with envisioning your life in the future i mean i do that as well but i'm talking about a, a deeper level when i say you have the power to create the life you want i mean that in the literal sense, like you have an opportunity to access the power to create whatever life you want. And if you don't believe me, stick around. I'm going to show you just how. All right. So the first objection, let's start with let's start with that. When you hear me say you have the power to create the life that you want. If you're like me, the first thing you may think is, well, then why there's so many people not creating a great life? That's a fair question, right? If we all have the power to create a great life, then why are there so many people who are not experiencing a great life? And here's the answer I want to give you. The reason why so many people are not experiencing a great life is because your capacity to create, right? Your capacity to create the life you want is determined by the source of your identity, the source of your self image. Now, before you think, OK, that's way too deep, I'm going to break this down for you, because you're, if you get this today, you're going to unlock new levels of value and power in your life like you've never seen before. If you get this, but just stay with me. So, again, the capacity to create the capacity to create the life that you want is determined by the source of your identity. And I'm going to read something here I, I put in my notes that I think is so important. And it's that creating a life begins with your identity. That's where life, that's what creating the life you want begins. Why? Because more than seeing what you want out of life or in life, you have to first clearly see who you are. Everything springs forth from that. That's why one of the greatest questions that's, that has the highest volume of searches on Google is who am I? What am I here for? That's a value based question. That's an identity based question. And that's why creating the life that you want, creating a great life starts with first clearly defining who you are. What's your identity? What's your self image? And here's the thing about identities. All identities have a source. 
all identities have a source. And, and think about it this way. I think this is a good analogy. Let's say I'm standing in a dark room, right? I'm in a dark room, but I have in my hand the power cord to the most, the brightest light ever. I mean, if I plug this in, it would just light up this room. So I have the power to create light. I have the power to illuminate the heck out of this room. But what do I need? I need a source. That's what I'm talking about. Your ability to create, your capacity to create is only as good as your source. Your capacity to create a great life is determined by your source. If you don't have the source, you can't access the greater levels of value and power. All right. And again, that may sound a little deep, but stay with me. We are going somewhere. So here's a key principle. I want you to know right off the bat, your level of creativity will never expand beyond your source. Going back to that light example, if I have the, the greatest light ever that will illuminate this room to look just gorgeous, but the source that I want to plug this light into does not have enough power, then I'll never access the fullness of that light. Oh, I hope this is making sense. If you get this, going back to the principle, the level of creativity will never expand beyond your source. I can never get the full light in this room. I can never fully illuminate this room if I don't have enough watts in that power source. You can never illuminate your life. You can never create a great life if the source that your life is, that your identity is plugged into does not have enough power, enough value. That's where we're going today. I'm going to show you how to plug into or make sure your identity, your image is plugged into the right source so that you can unleash all of the potential that's within you, all of the value, all of the power that you have accessible to you. And I shouldn't say I'm going to show you which source. I'm just going to show you these sources and then you can decide for yourself which source you want to plug your identity into. That's really what I want to do. So let's jump into these. All right. So. There's three sources. This is what you need to know. There's three sources. Now, out of these three sources that we plug our identity into, or that we source our, our identity, our image in, out of these three, two of them are deficient, meaning two of these sources will never be enough. Now, are they bad? No, you're going to see that they're not completely bad. They just will never be enough. They will never fully illuminate. So there's three sources, all right? And of these three sources, I'm going to show you what they are here. We're going to go to the board. But of these three sources, they all are based on confirmation of value and access to power. Okay? I'm going to say that again. They're all based on Confirmation of value, access to power. All right, stay with me. This is all gonna make sense, okay? So here are the three. Here are the three sources. Let's start with number three. These are the three sources of identity. Okay. Number three is when we source our identity based on this, how others see you how others see you so when we base our identity based on excuse me man <clears throat> when we base our identity in what others or how others see us then it's never enough when we base our identity on how others see us then here's what we're doing we're looking at the actions the thoughts the words we're looking at the all of those things we're looking at to confirm whether we are enough. That's a value point. We're looking at others to determine our power. That's why you have some people 
who they've experienced, you know, different things, or maybe someone said something to them when they were smaller and they've carried it with them their whole life. Another person said something to them and, and because their identity was rooted in what others, how others see them, they will go 10, 20, 30 years, maybe even more with their power stripped. They'll go 10, 20, 30 years or more with a limited perception or outlook on their value. All because their identity was sourced based on how others see them. Can you relate? We all can. That's why this is the lowest source. I would say it's probably the most deficient source. Does it mean that having value in others is wrong? No. Does it mean that you know trusting others, admiring others, having relationships is is wrong? No. You can other people can be a resource. They just can't be the source of your identity. Because if you make other people the source of your identity, then you are limiting your ability to create. Your ability to create in life is limited based on those people. Your ability to create in life is determined by how much those people accept you. How much those people validate you. It's based on how affectionate those people are towards you. And you will, you will fashion your sense of value, your sense of power based on those things. And those are, those are the deficiencies I'm talking about. When we make others the source of our identity, we are relying on their affirmation. We are relying on, on people. And what do we know about people? Humans will let you down. And not because humans are bad, but because we are flawed. And not just that, your identity is, he is, is heavy. To rely on someone else to be the source and to carry your identity, it's not fair to them. Because they're human. They're going to make a mistake eventually and they're going to let you down. They're going to diminish your sense of value if your identity is completely sourced in others. They're going to limit your power because they, they're only going to see your life based on what they believe for their life. And so your ability to create is determined by the source of your identity. The first source of your identity or, or potential source is when we place our identity based on how others see us. Here's the second one. The second source is when we, we place our identity around how we see ourselves. So how you see you. And let me tell you, this source is probably one of the most deceiving sources because this source, you can actually build what many would consider a great life. If you source your life based on how you see you and you are the source of your identity, I mean, you can, you can accomplish quite a bit. You, you can grow resources. You, you can have possessions. But here's the thing. They will always get to a point where it's not enough. If you are the source of your identity, there will always be a point where it's not enough. And so when we get to a point where we as ourselves are not, or as a source are not enough, what do we do? We supplement. And so we look for possessions. We look for accomplishments. We look for substances. We look for experiences. We look for pleasures. Why? Because we're trying to fill that void so that we feel a high sense of value and a high sense of power. Because that feeds our identity. And here's why this source will never be enough. Because we are not just physical beings. We are also mind and what? Spirit. And so you could potentially, I mean, I don't put it past the human being, but you could potentially take care of the body and mind piece. 
You can do that. We've seen people in, in this world who seem to have really sound minds, physiques and bodies that we would love to have. They have possessions, they have big houses, they have big cars, they have a lot of money. They have access to great experiences. They have access to great amounts of pleasure. And then you turn on the news and you see that that person is extremely depressed. Or you turn on the news and you see that that person is taking their own lives when it seems like they had everything. Why is that? Because when you make yourself the source of your identity, you can never feel that third element. We are, we are body, mind, and spirit. You and I can never feel the spiritual aspect. And I'll use an analogy for these first two sources. These first two sources, think about it like an appetite, right? If you eat some food, right, you eat breakfast or something, six hours from that time you ate breakfast or eight hours from that time you ate breakfast or maybe even sooner, you're going to have an appetite again. You're going to be hungry again. Why? Because the satisfaction of what you ate has already disappeared. It's already diminished. And that's how these first two sources work. It, it, you can get the praises from everyone else. You can have thousands of followers on Instagram and others validating you and making you feel great. And it'll, it'll satisfy that appetite for a short moment. But eventually, as that begins to wane, as it always does, as it begins to diminish, as it always does, the appetite, it rises up again. And the same thing is true when we make ourselves the source of our identity. We can't fill that spiritual void. The Bible tells us that eternity has been placed in the heart of every man, every woman. That's why it, it, you can see someone who has so much and it seems like, you know, you're thinking to yourself, I wish I had their life. I'd be a lot happier. But what you don't understand is, yes, they've been able to feel the body piece, the mind piece. They've been able to have a lot of experiences and pleasure, but there's still that one piece that their source does not have enough power and value to feel. And so what do we do? We just continue supplementing. We continue taking in pleasure. We continue taking in experiences. We continue looking for others to validate, looking for others to give us power. Until we eventually realize that none of it is enough. And that's when this third source comes into play. Because we have the first source, how others see you. We have the second source, how you see you, which is pretty good. That can get you far. But if you want to create a great life, the best life that you were created to live, then your identity must be sourced in how God sees you. Your identity must be, if you want to have a great life that, is, that doesn't have any deficits, because remember, the, the lowest level of how others see you, deficits, filled with deficits. The second level of how you see you, while it can be a good source, it still has deficits. But that third one, that, that's the highest source of identity. That third one is the highest source of identity. Why? Why is that? Because if God is the one who created the universe, then that means that nothing, no one thinks higher of you than God. That includes you. No one thinks higher. Nothing thinks higher of you than God. How do I know this? Genesis chapter one, it says, or, or chapter two or three, I think actually, says that God made us in his image. It tells us that God valued us so much that he placed his image within us. And so that means that's an eternal level of value. And if God is the one who created this universe and he is our source, then that means we have an infinite access to power. So when we talk about confirmation of value, right? When we talk about access to power, it doesn't get any higher. It doesn't get any better than having our identity sourced in how God sees us. 
I'm telling you, man, if you get this, if you get this, the cap on your life, it, it bursts open. If you can get this, this is the only source where you can get infinite power, eternal value. There is no deficiency. There is no appetite. It is all satisfied. Because the feeling, the, the, the fulfillment is infinite. The fruit is rich. It's, it never ends. And that's why I would encourage this source, because it's the only source that completely satisfies. And if your identity is rooted in this source, then you are primed and ready to create a great life. If you want to create a great life, start with the source of your identity. If you want to open up new levels of value, new levels of power, new levels of, of progress and accomplishment, Analyze your life and figure out which one of these sources, let me put it up on the screen again, which one of these sources? Is your identity rooted in how others see you? Is your identity rooted in how you see you? Or is your identity rooted in how God sees you? Which one is it? Is your identity, let me say it again, is your identity rooted in how others see you? Is your identity rooted in how you see you? Or is your identity rooted in how God sees you? Because if your identity is rooted in an infinite source, then that means you have infinite possibilities of what you can create. Somebody's going to get this today, man. So, and there's one thing I forgot to mention. Nothing places a higher capacity in you. That means ability to, to create. Nothing places a higher capacity in you than when God is your source. That's why we can read through the Bible and we can see all kind of great feats that mere men like you and I accomplish. Why? Because they were connected to the right source. So this is, I know there's a burning question. I can, I can sense it through this camera. There's a burning question that's coming to your mind. And we're not going to be able to answer it today. That's why we're probably going to do a part two to this, because I can hear someone asking, if that's true, Joshua, and that God gives us this infinite you know, power and eternal value, which gives us the ability to create infinitely, then why are there so many Christians who don't have great lives? <laughs> I know that's the question you're wondering. Some of you are thinking, I don't even follow God and I wouldn't trade the Christians I know for their lives who are supposed to be, you know, have their identity sourced and how God sees them. That's a really good question. I'm not going to be able to answer it today, but that's a really good question that you want to tune into part two because I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to tell you why there's so many Christians who aren't experiencing a great life, but yet claim to have how God sees them as the source of their identity. Oh, I can't wait to get into that. But let's recap for today. So there's three sources of your identity. Remember, there's three sources of your identity. And why is this important? Because the level, your level of creativity will never expand beyond your source. Your power will always be capped by your source, the source of your identity. And so there's three sources of identity, right? There's looking to others for our value and power. There's looking to self for our value and power. And then there's looking to God for our value and power. And when you get this, when you understand this, you will unlock so much value. You will unlock greater levels of value and power in your life to truly get out there and create the life that you desire. Create a great life. All right, that's all for this week. I hope this was helpful. I didn't know if I wanted to do this one because I thought it might be a little too deep, but I love y'all. I'm going to give you the truth. And I believe this is really going to help some people. So I hope it was valuable to you. Uh, let me know in the comments or send me some feedback. Other than that, I'll see you all same time, same place next week, reminding you that success is your destiny. I'll see you on the next one.